Father. Our whole desire in life is to to go to new levels of intimacy with Him. It's to go deeper with Him. It's to hear Him differently in, in, in new ways. And if we never experience His love that He has for us, the love of the Father, we will never experience that intimacy that He desires to have with us. You see, when, it's, when, we, when we discover his intimacy, when we discover his love, it begins to unlock certain things in our life that have never been unlocked before. The mysteries of heaven, the, the things that God wants to do in our life and, and for us begin to become clear. That more that we hunger for, that more that we desire to have, all of a sudden becomes a reality because all of a sudden we know what it means to have the love of the Father. Too often we get caught in our life and our circumstances and our situations and we wonder why this and why that and it's because we haven't embraced His love. We haven't allowed Him to pour out His love onto you and I. And it's when we get to that moment of experiencing His love that we will, for the first time, be able to go places that He has for you to go and experience things that He wants you to experience and see things that He wants you to see and feel things that He wants you to feel and and experience the more that He has for you. But too often our life and our past and our circumstances and our things that we deal with are hindering blocks from us experiencing His love. And I want to read you this portion of Scripture. And I want you to hear what I'm trying to say. There are those, you're going to see words in here that are, that are uh, 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 I don't know what the words are anymore. <laughs> Intimate, experienced, favored privilege that that's that's what we are but then but then there's people that have blocked minds and blocked eyes and blocked hearts and will never experience any of that stuff and i love the word that came earlier about capacity and allowing yourself to go somewhere that you never thought you would go because God wants to do something and move by His Spirit over your life, but it takes us willing to expand our capacity and opening up our minds and looking at things that we thought are weird and crazy and and out there and saying, God, I don't know about that, but if it's you, I want it. And it's when we get to that place of if it's you, I want it, that revival breaks forth. That the fire falls. That the healings and the supernaturals and the signs and wonders begin to take place. Because all of a sudden you are allowing yourself to experience His love so that His love can take you to places you've never been. Watch what it says. I'm going to pick it up in... Verse 11, you have to understand what the word parable means. Parable in this particular chapter means to provoke intense thought. The disciples say, Jesus, why are you sharing these, temp- uh, these parables? He says, I do it so that intense thought can be provoked. In, in my language, in, my, in the Joshua translation, he's doing it because if he can provoke intense thought... He can provoke you to hunger and thirst after Him. See, intense thought simply means that you're not satisfied with where you're at. You're going to hear something, you're going to see something, and you're going to do whatever you can to get to that point. To experience all that He has, to see all that He has, to hear all that He has. So Jesus is telling his disciples that, listen guys, I'm sharing these parables so that you can get from here to there. Why? Because his love is so great. 
His love is so deep. His love is so vast. His love is so wide. His love does not stop. His love is never failing. The prophetic words will come. The words of knowledge will come. All these things will come and they're amazing. But they at some point will pass away. But his love will never pass away. And he's asking you as people this morning to just stay where you're at. Pause and say, let me, let me come and allow you to experience my love. It's when you experience his love, your whole life is changed, transformed, renewed, shaken, set free, hunger, thirst, run after it, drive after it. You do whatever it takes to experience his love. Look what it says in verse 11. Can we turn these lights on? He explained, you've. <laughs> and the glory of the Lord shone around him. Do you know the easiest way to give a pastor a big head? Do, do that. Did I say something? <laughs> Is that the glory that just went out there? Verse 11, he explained, you've. Say you've. You. Okay. Now I'm going to say he explained, and you put your own name in there. He explained, Josh. No, come on. He explained, Josh. Has been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden truths and mystery of the realm of heaven's kingdom but they have not you have a group of people that have experienced kingdom realm right. have experienced this love of a father have have had the mysteries of heaven unlocked to them have had these holy spirit holy ghost fire encounters with heaven, because heaven's coming down to earth, but then you have this whole group over here that have not. They haven't experienced it. They haven't tasted it. They're on the outside looking in saying, I don't know about that, that seems a little crazy. Come on. I don't know about that, they, they speak funny tongues sometimes. Or I don't know about that, they dance sometimes during worship, or they lay hands on people, or they, or they shout, or they do all this stuff. That they read here, but they take the Bible as a great story and say that this story was a great thing to learn from and study from, but it doesn't apply today. If you want to experience and encounter the love of God, do what this book says. Amen. Do what it says. Period. End of story. Nothing else. Amen. But we look at it. And we say, well, you know what? Culture is leaning that way. So therefore, I'm going to be okay with, with abortion. Or I'm going to be okay with uh, same-sex marriage. Or I'm going to be okay with divorcing just because I feel like it. Or I'm going to be okay with, with doing this. Or I'm going to be, because now, look at my church. It's huge now. Media is not against me anymore. Media is saying, I'm just like that. But if we are truly on fire people for the kingdom of God and have really been transformed by the love of a father, when we hear that stuff, we take a stand and say no, and we begin to push back the gates of hell and take back what was stolen. And all of a sudden, the church has been renewed to what she was created and designed to be. But the thing is, is there's people that haven't experienced this love. They haven't encountered it. They haven't allowed themselves to encounter it. Because there's shame. There's guilt. There's condemnation. But when Jesus went to the cross, he went to the cross so that you can live this life free of guilt, shame, and condemnation. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter the choices you made. It doesn't matter that you were kicked out of this institution or that institution or, or you did this or that. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that today you've made a, a line in the sand and saying, because I've experienced this love, I am not moving. 
I am standing my ground, and I'm going to take back what the enemy has stolen. And you want revival fast is when the whole body of Christ links arms and says, you know what? We are not budging. I have experienced intimately, not just experienced, intimately, in the depths, in the knower of my knower, in times where only God has spoken to me, I have experienced, you have experienced, you have encountered, you have felt it. You have had this shaking in you. You've had this stirring in you because there's so much more out there that God has for us and it's when we fully grasp it, the world changes. Redmond changes. Prineville changes. Ben changes. Madras changes. Sisters, Black Butte changes. Central Oregon changes. Do you know the amount of people that will send messages to Bernice and I from like, well, pretty much only the valley, because that's where we know most of our people, saying <laughs> things like, do you know there is a revival coming to Central Oregon? Yeah. And it's not just them saying it. It's been prophesied in times past. There is a move of the Spirit coming to Central Oregon. When, God, he's just waiting for people to get out of the way and allow him to do it and say, you know what? I don't care what's happening out there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw my line in the sand. I'm not going to move because I've experienced it, and I'm going to take it everywhere I go. Amen. It's his love that does it. You have permission to allow his love into your life. Amen. It is his love. It is his love. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation. Right. I want to jump down to verse 15. Here is the number one revival move of the spirit killer. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their ears are plugged and hard of hearing. And they have deliberately, deliberately shut their eyes. You want to know why we don't have revival right now? You want to know why there's not a move of the Spirit? You want to know why? Look no further than this scripture. We are too caught up with what is happening around us. We are too caught up with the way of the world and the media and denomination this and denominational line that and what that person says and what this person says that we are losing sight of what God wants to do in his people today. People are literally Christians. The world's one thing, but now you got a whole body of believers that are deliberately shutting their eyes to what is happening, and they want to know why they haven't felt the love of the Father. They want to know why things aren't happening and revival is because they're deliberately shutting their eyes. They are not allowing themselves to have an open heart to receive more revelation. Progressive is an ongoing word. It's an ongoing term. It is something that happens more and more and more each day. And if we want progressive revelation, progressive revival, open your heart. Open your heart. If it's of God, I want it. If it's of God, I'm going to do it. If it's of God, I'm first in line. If it's of God, we're going to experience it. Revival killer, dull mind, blocked ears, deliberately closed eyes. Revival starter, otherwise they would open their eyes to see, open their ears to hear, open their minds to understand. And guess what? When you do that, it says, and they will turn to me, and I will heal them instantly. Fire of God, revival starter, heaven on earth, kingdom come, will be done, kingdom realm, all that stuff we've prayed about, desired for, you want it, open heart, open mind, open ears, open eyes. There it is. 
verse 16, but your eyes are privileged for they see. Delighted are your ears for they are open to all, say all, all, all things. Many prophets and godly people in times past have yearned to see these days of miracles that you have been favored, have been favored to see. They would have given everything to hear the revelation you've been favored to hear. Yet they did not get to see as much as a glimpse or hear even a whisper. There are people in our world today that are longing, yearning, desperate, desiring a move of the Spirit. We've been favored. What does it say? We've been favored. We've been privileged. We've been delighted. We've been intimate. Somebody asked Bernice and I this week what changed after our trip to Florida. And I could only describe it as this. Cliff, come here. Uh (laughs) I can only describe it as this. Here's what happened. Because I hadn't seen, I hadn't experienced, I hadn't been favored to, to encounter what happened there. I mean, this was all Bernice. Bernice was like, has experienced this love and this encounter and this everything that God has. And I was going there more like an observer, right? I'm going with her. We're going to hang out together, reconnect. You know, there's nothing in Tampa to do, so it's not like you're going to go sightseeing anywhere. And I remember so clearly the Tuesday morning, we're standing there. And everybody in the whole place is having this encounter. And the Holy Spirit, yeah, I am going to, the Holy Spirit came up as physically as Cliff is feeling me right now, just like this, and just did this, just began to shake. (laughs) (laughs) It must have had a different effect. He shook me. And for the first time in my whole entire life, I felt what it was like to embrace the love of the Father. I've been a Christian my whole life. I know all this stuff. But until you encounter it, until you feel it, until you allow His arms to grab you and shake you and say, look what you're missing. That is what changed everything. It's not because I read a book. It's not because I, 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 you know, went to that place and then went to that place and then went to that place. I was in a space. And for the first time, I allowed myself to be open and say, okay, God, what do you want to do? If it's you, I want it. I see them laughing over there. I see them crying over there. I see them shaking over there. I see them rolling over there. I see them doing all this. I don't know what's going on, but if it's for me and it's from you, I want it. And just because somebody is here prostrate laying like this in their own encounter doesn't mean I'm not encountering God. Your encounter, my encounter look totally different. The key is, are you going to open yourself up to allow him to love you, to allow him to throw his arms around you, to allow him to come and speak to you? Psalm says, I will satisfy you each morning with my love. He wants to satisfy you with his love. He wants to cover you with his love. He wants to encounter you with his love. But you have to allow him to do it. Your past does not matter. Your history does not matter. Your circumstances do not matter. He is still going to come and encounter you with his love if you allow him to. But it takes an opening. It takes a surrendering. It takes a yielding. It takes a God. Shake me. Do whatever you have to do. 
I'm not satisfied with that because I know there's more. My prayer each day is, God, shake me some more. Reveal yourself anew. The progressive I want. I don't want to just live off of a memory. I don't want to read a book I bought while I was there. I don't want to listen to worship music that I first heard while I was there. I want his mercies that are new every morning. And he's going to deliver it to you. Here's the thing. We have to require deeper Holy Spirit. We have to want more Holy Spirit. We have to say, Jesus, your helper was left here for a reason. I want all that the helper has for me. I want it. My family needs it. My city needs it. My church needs it. My friends need it. Cliff needs it. I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you willing to look at what's uncomfortable? What's weird? Say, God, I don't know if I don't know what's going on. But if it's you, I want it. Bring it on. You know, growing up, there's the, I, I don't remember the guy's name. His name was Hank something. Are you ready for some football? Monday night party? You know that song? My song we're singing is, are you ready for some spirit? Holy Ghost fire? Like, is that what you're ready for? Are you ready? The fire is going to come. His presence is going to come. His anointing is going to come. His love is going to come. But we are living in a day and age where accepting love is one of the hardest things for us to do. We keep thinking that they know too much, so therefore how can they? My favorite scripture in the whole Bible, John 15, 16. You, 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 me, did not choose him. He chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. The love of the Father is so great, so wide, so high, so deep, so vast that he says, I know what your history is, but guess what? I still chose you. I still called you. I still appointed you to go and bear fruit. Open yourself this morning. Some of you are thinking, well, I know what the love is. But have you opened? There is more. <laughs> there is more. And he wants to douse you with it. He wants to soak you. With it. He wants to saturate you. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive continued revelation until he has more than enough. We will never, ever have enough. And that's the beautiful thing about Jesus. It's the beautiful thing about his spirit. He's going to give. He's going to give. You've heard the term, I need, to, I need to learn how to minister out of the overflow, not out of the lack. You want to know how you minister out of the overflow? You spend time. You become intimate with him. You find out what he has to say to you. And you say to him, God, before I even sing, worship, pray, do anything, I'm coming to you with open heart, open ears, open eyes. This is what I want. Draw near to him. He will draw near to you. He's there outstretched already, waiting for us to stretch back. More. More. His love. 
Scott sent me a scripture this morning. Perfect love cast out fear. I'm going to steal his illustration because it was really good. Peter, when they were in the boat, saw the perfect love. He responded to the perfect love. Life is what caused him to sink. Circumstance around him is what caused him to sink. His eyes shifted from perfect love to life. But it's when we allow that perfect love to come around us, the waves calm, the storm quiets. Shalom, the peace of the Holy Spirit is your portion. Let's stand together this morning.